Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash, live in England. Jacob, one of the believers had the question, um, is true Islam kind to women? And I'm talking about apart from terrorism. I recently saw a movie called Not Without My Daughter with Sally Field, which showed a, a true story of a kidnapping of an American woman and her child to Iran. What's the difference between how the Koran teaches to treat women and the Bible teaches to treat women? Hmm. Among other things, the Koran allows wife beating. Jesus taught monogamy is the ideal. The Koran tells us that while Muslims can only have four wives, Mohammed himself had more than that. And he uses religious position to do it. In fact, Mohammed forced his son, his stepson, to divorce his wife so Mohammed could take her. Women, Mohammed married Aisha, the daughter of Abu Bakir, when she was six and took her virginity when she was nine, according to the Hadith. According to the teachings of Islam, Muhammad was a pedophile. He actually had sex at the age of approximately 54 with a nine-year-old little girl. Well, that's how women are treated. There was a film some years ago showing wealthy Sa Saudi sheiks, oil rich, going on private jets to India, and they called it employment contracts or something, and they were taking underage girls, giving their parents a few hundred dollars, and taking them back to their harems in Saudi Arabia. And when questioned, they said, what's wrong with it? Our prophet did it. I have been from one end of the Islamic world to the other. From the Atlantic to the Pacific. I've gone from Morocco throughout the Middle East. I've been to the Persian Gulf, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Jordan. I've been to the Far East, to Indonesia, to, to, to Malaysia, um, I, I, you know, Brunei. From one end of the Muslim world to the other, I have been. I have never seen women's rights anywhere in the Islamic world. I've never seen human rights anywhere in the Islamic world. And I've never seen Muslims give Christians and Jews the rights that they get in Britain or America or Australia or in any other country. Of the 57 Islamic countries in the world, not one of them treats women the way civilized nations do. You can go on YouTube and watch women being publicly flogged under Sharia, mercilessly, even old ladies, under Islamic law. It goes on from Aceh in, in Indonesia to Sudan to this day. It goes on in Saudi Arabia. Nobody says a word. We're told it's a religion of peace and tolerance. Where is the tolerance? If it's a religion of peace, why are there three times as many conflicts involving Islam than there are all the other religious people groups put together? Now, there are moderate Muslims, yes, but be careful. You can't identify. Much, Bruce. Robert? Well, I hate to bring bad news, but that's really all I do, actually. <laughs> the fact is, people have been asking me yesterday and today, as well as at pretty much everywhere else that I speak, uh, what uh, can we do to encourage the moderates? And I've got to tell you that there are moderate Muslims, but there is no moderate Islam. That is an unpleasant fact, but it is a fact, and I'll explain. Now, moderate Muslims, people usually assume that that means Muslims who believe different things from the jihadis, that they don't believe 
that it is part of their religious responsibility to wage war against unbelievers. They don't believe that they should hate Jews and kill them. They don't believe that they should subjugate women and non-Muslims as inferiors in the society under an institutionalized system of discrimination and harassment. There is actually no such Islam. People talk in the West and they take advantage of our ignorance about Islam to mislead people into complacency. I'll give you an example. There is a 512 page fatwa against terrorism by a Pakistani Islamic theologian named Muhammad Tahir al-Qadri. And about five or ten times a day, Muslims write to me and they say, you say Islam is not a religion of peace, you should read Tahir al-Qadri. So I did. And luckily, you know, it's the wonders of the internet age, I was able to get a PDF and search it. And so what I did was, I searched it for the Quran passages that exhort Muslims to commit violence and wage war against unbelievers. Because if he's really going to be presenting an alternative form of Islam, then it would be just commonsensical, would it not, for him to take up those passages and explain why Muslims should not take them as marching orders today. And I searched for chapter 9, verse 5, slay them wherever you find them. Chapter 4, verse 89, slay them wherever you find them. Chapter 2, verse 191, slay them wherever you find them. Chapter 9, verse 29, fight against the Jews and the Christians until they're subjugated and pay the tax. Chapter 47, verse 4, when you meet the unbelievers, strike at their necks, behead them. And others of that kind. 512 pages, he never mentioned any of those verses. Now, do you understand the implications of that? This is supposed to be a piece saying that terrorism is wrong and Muslims should not engage in it, and he never addressed any of the justifications that the jihad terrorists use to show that what they're doing is Islamically correct. That's not a reform kind of Islam. That's not a moderate Islam. That's a big, extensive, elaborate effort to deceive unbelievers and make us ignorant and complacent about the jihad threat. You cannot reform something, you cannot fix a problem without acknowledging that there's a problem, you see. And there is no moderate Islam. There is no version of Islam that does not teach warfare against unbelievers and their subjugation. It's just like this. This does not mean, as Raymond and Bruce were saying, that all Muslims are doing this or all Muslims are even on board with this. But it's just like in the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church teaches, as part of its official teaching from the Pope and so on, Contraception is wrong. Contraception is immoral. Don't contracept. <laughs> survey after survey shows that 70, 80, 90 percent of Catholics use contraception. Now, we would be absolutely wrong, incorrect, to say that, oh, that means that the church doesn't really teach that contraception is wrong. It really does. It's just that most Catholics don't pay attention. Islam really teaches warfare against unbelievers. A lot of Muslims don't pay attention. That's just great. The problem is they have no theological leg to stand on in Islam, and therefore when they're challenged by the jihadis, and even when their children are recruited by the jihadis, they don't have any answer. The thing is, people have a lot of influences in their lives. Many of you have a religion, but you also have other perspectives, other priorities, other beliefs, and all of these things are complicated in everybody's heart and soul and mind so that you have a spectrum of belief, knowledge, and fervor. Some people are very knowledgeable and very devout, whatever their religion may be, and some people bear the name of the religion, but they couldn't care less, or they don't know, or they're just more interested in something else. That's what moderate Muslims really are. They are people who just want to live their lives. If you talk about Muslims who are aware that the that the Quran and the example of Muhammad and Islamic law all teach warfare and conquest and subjugation of unbelievers and who reject that and who say that must not be done, you're talking about maybe five or ten people. <laughs> I mean worldwide, out of 1.6 billion. Zudi Jasser and his friends. <laughs> if you want to talk about actual Muslim reformers, it is exactly that way. But if you want to talk about Muslims who just aren't going to take up arms against us at any time, well that's millions upon millions of people. The problem is, when the chips are down, where will they side? They will side with the Muslims who are waging war. That is where their allegiance is. They probably won't do anything. 
but to base our foreign policy and our domestic policy, our immigration policy, to base the future of our nation, to base our children's lives on the idea that the vast majority of Muslims don't want to do this, don't care about jihad and conquest and subjugation, and that somehow some large group of Muslims who are moderates are going to rise up and fight against the jihadis and stop them, that is not only foolish, that is suicidal. And that film that you cite with Sally Fields, that's a true story. Her husband was a medical specialist. He was an American-trained surgeon. But like a Rottweiler, there's something in the Muslim heart that can turn them. The, the Muslim terrorists who attempted to blow up the airport terminal in Glasgow, Scotland. Every one of them was a medical doctor or a medical scientist. Every one of them. These are educated Muslims. Women's rights, to see the stinking hypocrisy of these pink-hatted protesters against Mr. Trump, listening to Linda Sasser, an apologist for Saudi Arabian oppression of women. Linda Sarsour spends quite a bit of time trying to convince Americans that they would absolutely love Sharia. You'll know when you're living under Sharia law if suddenly all your loans and credit cards become interest-free. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Wow, so if I sign up for Sharia, I get interest-free loans and credit cards. Not to mention child marriage, spousal abuse, raping female captives, stoning adulteresses, the death penalty for apostates, and the violent subjugation of all non-Muslims. Sharia, come for the interest-free loans, stay for the pedophilia and female genital mutilation. Speaking of female genital mutilation, you'll never guess who just got caught lying to all of her gullible followers about female genital mutilation. I'll give you a hint. I am every Islamophobe's worst nightmare. She's every Islamophobe's worst nightmare. Someone who constantly lies about Islam in order to deceive people who would never in a million years sit down and actually read an Orthodox Muslim source. Obviously, if you're trying to get Americans to warm up to Sharia, you have to keep them utterly ignorant of almost all of Sharia. Just keep telling them about the interest-free credit cards until they're being forced to convert with swords at their throats. And yet Sarsour and Aslan are constantly paraded across news channels as experts. It's as if our news channels don't want accurate information about Islam. The three opinions of scholars are, one, that it is obligatory for both males and females. Two, that circumcision is sunnah for both males and females. Three, that circumcision is obligatory for men and is good and mustahab for women. Mustahab means recommended. The scholars conclude, Thus it is clear that the fuqaha of Islam, the scholars of Islam, are agreed that circumcision is prescribed for both males and females, and in fact the majority of them are of the view that it is obligatory for both. No one said that it is not prescribed, or that it is makru, meaning disliked, or haram, meaning forbidden. All of the scholars said that circumcision is prescribed for females. Most said that it's obligatory. No one said that it's disliked or forbidden. No one except American Muslims like Linda Sarsour and Reza Aslan. And here's what I find most amazing. You can go to some of Linda Sarsour's followers. You can show them what the Muslim sources say about female circumcision what actual Muslim scholars say about female circumcision, what Sharia manuals say about female circumcision. You can show them that what Linda Sarsour says about Islam totally contradicts what Muhammad and his companions and Islam's greatest scholars said about Islam. And they just don't care. Linda Sarsour tells them what they want to hear and that's all that matters. That's terrifying. Not only because there's an entire generation out there that has no respect for facts or reality, but also because female genital mutilation is a real problem for young girls around the world. And by constantly attacking people,
who try to expose the problem, Sarsour is ensuring that future generations of Muslim girls will have their genitals mutilated in the name of Islam because no one ever deals with the problem. One person who is trying to do something about the female genital mutilation problem is Ayan Hirsi Ali. Sarsour once tweeted, Rajit Gabriel equals Ayan Hirsi Ali. She's asking for a censored whippin. I wish I could take their vaginas away. They don't deserve to be women. Linda Sarsour wants to take Ayan Hirsi Ali's vagina away. Why is this disturbing? Ayan Hirsi Ali is a former Muslim and she's a victim of female genital mutilation. Islam already took part of her vagina. Sarsour wants to take the rest. Quite the champion of women's rights you've rallied behind there, feminists. But again, we can agree with Sarsour on one thing. Female genital mutilation is a barbaric practice that has no place anywhere in the world. But think about the obvious conclusion here. Premise one, female genital mutilation clearly has a place in Islam. Premise two, female genital mutilation has no place in this world. Therefore, Islam has no place in this world. Thanks for the new argument, Linda. In your honor, I'll call it the Sarsourian argument against Islam. And saying you can't be a feminist and support Zionism or support Israel and not be anti-Israel. This is who they've got speaking. Yeah, I wish these feminists would go to Saudi Arabia or Iran and parade their feminism. See what happens to them. You've got this terrible hypocrisy in the left, and particularly among the feminists. Somehow, partner with radical Islam, and you see it on the campuses of America. You get these Saudi-funded institutes or programs on campuses where you have these left-wing professors trying to portray Islam as a religion of peace. But when you go to these countries and see what it really is, they know they are lying. This takes place at Georgetown University. It takes place at Yale and Harvard. These feminists and left-wing people in America who are big on human rights, and more so homosexual rights, as they put it, <laughs> go see what happens to women or homosexuals under Sharia. Find me a country where there's an exception. Even the more moderate ones, like Jordan and Egypt, believe me, are not on a par with the West. But where you have actual Sharia, like Sudan, Saudi Arabia, some of the Emirates, and obviously Iran, ladies, you don't want to know. I've only told you the truth. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But... In this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea. It's an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be shadows of the beast. Shadows of the beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen 
will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo, Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.